Hi guys. Uh, we talked about vectors in two dimensions and the big factor of two dimensional vectors is that the perpendicular vectors are independent of each other, which means one direction does not affect the other. Now, generally when we deal with the vectors, we're gonna be dealing with velocity and find the velocity components at any point or using the components of velocity to find the overall velocity at any point. Um, so now I wanna talk about the two dimensional uh, kinematics that we're looking at here. So if we have two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, they can be broken up into, um, or, or they can be combined into a resultant vector, which is the sum. So on the top section here, we have a turtle that has different displacements and you can see the displacement is the velocity times the time because it's going at a constant velocity for a certain amount of time. The X component or horizontal component of that vector of that turtle's motion is how fast it's moving horizontally or how far it's moving horizontally, which is the displacement times cosine theta. And the Y component is how far it's moving vertically, which is the displacement times sine theta. So we have relationships between the perpendicular components, the X and Y, and the overall displacement D. Uh, likewise, we can do that with velocities. Notice you can't combine velocities and, and displacements in the same vector triangle. They have to be only displacement vectors or only velocity vectors. So the bottom one here has the velocities of that turtle. The overall velocity, uh, in fact, this would be the initial velocity, V0, um, is the hypotenuse of the triangle, while V0x is the horizontal components of velocity and V0Y is the vertical component of velocity. And so if we wanna solve for, for them, if we know the overall velocity, we can take that velocity and the, and the angle theta and just take uh, V0 times cosine theta, that would give us our horizontal velocity and V0 times sine theta, that would give us our vertical velocity. That's like if we have an airplane that's flying in uh, a climbing and gaining elevation, we can figure out how fast its shadow is moving along the ground with the horizontal velocity vector and how fast it's gaining elevation with the vertical velocity vector. So we have two different dimensions. So we can use, we can use X and Y to represent horizontal and vertical respectively. And we have the same formulas that we had before with uh, just replacing X or Y. So we indicate velocities in the horizontal and vertical dimension by just having a subscript X or Y in those. And notice V0 is the initial velocity for anything. Uh, and V0X is the initial horizontal velocity. V0Y is the initial vertical velocity. A sub X is the is the horizontal acceleration, A sub Y is the vertical acceleration. So um, those are base formulas for two-dimensional motion. However, we're going to focus primarily on projectile motion. And projectile motion is unique because it doesn't have all of these formulas that are necessary. So in projectile motion, we have some assumptions that we have to make. We're going to disregard the effect of air resistance. We're going to recognize that the acceleration of gravity will just treat it as a constant at the surface of the earth, 9.81 meters per second per second downward. And we're gonna ignore the fact that the earth is rotating. Um, that's not a huge factor in most situations, but in real long distance projectile um, motion, it could be a factor. We're gonna use a conventional uh, coordinate plane in having the X axis um, be horizontal motion and y axis be vertical. So the positive y would mean that it's above where it started. So if you have a displacement that's positive, that means it's above where it started. If you have displacement, a vertical displacement that's negative, it's going to be below where it started. And there's no acceleration horizontally and only acceleration vertically downward. So that's really the key because the fact that horizontal acceleration is zero simplifies our formulas. So that means that as you can see here, when we have a free fall, 
the horizontal acceleration is zero, the vertical acceleration is g. When we have a projectile, which is simply a free fall with some horizontal motion, which is the right hand side, the baseball that's thrown, the horizontal motion, the horizontal acceleration is still zero, but the vertical acceleration is still g. So they're independent of each other. So only the vertical motion is accelerated. That's why we get the particular trajectory of the of the projectile, which is what the path of the projectile is called. And that trajectory is a parabolic path because one direction is accelerated, that's a vertical, and one direction is not, that's a horizontal. So it simplifies our formulas. The horizontal formulas, there's never any acceleration. So that means the horizontal velocity stays constant, which is that lower formula in the horizontal, vx equals v0x. You can write v0x, but you don't have to because vx is equal to that. So that's kind of an, an identity. Horizontal velocity stays constant. So the one formula that we use for horizontal motion is basically the average velocity formula. But you usually solve it for how far something is uh, away horizontally. So delta x equals vx times t. Vertical motion still uses the same one-dimensional motion situations with a constant acceleration, and that constant acceleration is the acceleration of gravity. So we can find vertical displacement or final vertical velocity if we know how long something moves vertically. And so we've got that going for us. Now here's the thing. We're going to start with the simplest type of projectile motion. Those are projectiles that are launched, vertical, uh, launched horizontally. If it's launched horizontally, V0y, initial vertical velocity, is zero. That simplifies all of these formulas tremendously. Because if V0y is zero, then the top formula, delta y equals one half gt squared, and so on. So if we have zero launch angle, that's the, like the right-hand side. I don't know why this girl is crouching and rolling off the cliff. I would at least be running. Um, so if they're running off the cliff or rolling off a cliff or falling off a shelf or falling off a table or anything like that, that's a horizontally launched projectile. The left-hand side, she is not horizontally launching. She is launching with a horizontal and vertical component. So we, we'll worry about that later. But here, theta equals zero. And here's the things we know about that. When theta equals zero, the initial velocity is all horizontal, and there's no vertical velocity to start with. As soon as the object becomes a projectile, vertical velocity changes because gravity starts acting on it. Horizontal velocity stays constant. So our formulas get simplified. The horizontal velocity or horizontal formula doesn't change. But the vertical formulas all are simplified because of vy0 is 0. So now, if we know how long something falls, we certainly know the acceleration, so we can figure out how far it falls, or how fast it's falling. Or if we know how far it falls, we can figure out how fast it's falling. So these three formulas under vertical are simplified. So that's what we're looking at here. The path that the projectile follows is the parabolic path that you see here. And what we get is for each each moment, each it, it, these dots that are represented are showing us that the horizontal displacement is the same, but the vertical displacement increases because it's speeding up going down. So we're looking at the, at the second half of a parabola from the top down. So this is a horizontally launched projectile that's launched from nine and a half meters up and as it falls it proceeds one meter um, each time and for every meter that it moves horizontally which is a constant rate it starts speeding up faster and faster going downward all right so that's what we're looking at with these situations and we can solve for where something is if we know how long it's moved based on its initial horizontal velocity. We can find the horizontal displacement if we know time and initial velocity. We can find vertical displacement if we know time, 
because anything that drops the same amount of time drops the same distance. Time is the one thing that ties together the vertical and horizontal motion. All right, that's what I want to stop with there. So I'll answer the questions. We're going to do a simulation with the, the FET app to just play around and see how those um, horizontally launched projectiles compare to each other. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day.